The San Diego Musculoskeletal Project presents Thumb Carpal Metacarpal Joint Injection. Injection of the CMC joint is useful for treatment of pain from osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, or traumatic arthritis. Anatomically, the CMC joint is found at the articulation of the proximal metacarpal of the thumb and the trapezium of the wrist. We can see the CMC joint in the context of the rest of the hand joints on this hand model. From distal to proximal, the thumb joints consist of the interphalangeal IP joint, then the metacarpal phalangeal MCP joint, and then the carpal metacarpal CMC joint at the articulation between the first metacarpal and the trapezium. CMC joint injection is not to be confused with the true wrist injection, which is placed between the radius and the carpal bones. Once pain is located to the base of the thumb, take care to differentiate CMC joint pain from tenderness at the slightly more proximal anatomical snuff box, where pain might indicate scaphoid trauma, or tenderness along the first dorsal compartment tendons, where tenderness over the abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis tendons may indicate de Quervain's tenosynovitis. Now we can take the anatomical landmarks reviewed on the hand model and apply it to find the CMC injection site on a true hand. The linear articulation between the trapezium and the proximal edge of the first metacarpal identifies the carpal metacarpal joint. To mark the CMC injection site, find the part of the CMC joint that lies between the extensor pollicis longus tendon and the extensor pollicis brevis tendon. The two extensor pollicis tendons are easily palpable and usually visible as well when the thumb is in extension. However, the CMC joint is more easily palpated and injected when the thumb is in a neutral position. Inject on the ulnar side of the extensor pollicis brevis tendon to avoid the radial artery. Mark your injection site with a pen or needle cap so that it's visible even after prepping. Trial of CMC joint injection is indicated once conservative therapy has failed, including rest and activity modification, a thumb spike a splint, NSAIDs, or use of ice and heat. Supplies for a CMC joint injection include gloves, alcohol swabs, betadine or chloroprep or any other topical sterilizer, a three milliliter syringe with a 25 gauge one inch needle, half a cc of 1% lidocaine without epinephrine, 0.5 cc's or 20 milligrams of triamcinolone suspension or equivalent. The total volume for the injection should be no larger than one cc as this is a very small joint. Ethyl chloride, gauze, and a band-aid for aftercare. Thumb CMC joint injection technique. Place the patient's hand on the table thumb side up. Moving the thumb can help you feel the articulation better. Palpate the CMC joint and mark the injection site with a pen cap or nail. You can see the marked site on this patient. Prep the site with an alcohol pad and then chlorhexidine or iodine times three. Allow the site to dry fully. Topical ethyl chloride can help decrease the pain of needle entry. An arthritic CMC joint can be very narrow, so distal traction on the thumb can help open up the joint. If the needle does not go directly into the CMC joint, then walk the needle until it sinks into the joint space. Getting your needle into the narrow CMC joint space is the trickiest part of this injection, so we'll look at two more examples. Sometimes the needle goes straight into the joint, as with this Parkinsonian patient. Note that the distal thumb traction also helps to stabilize the patient's tremor. But more commonly, you might need to tap along the underlying bone before your needle sinks into the CMC joint. Once you are in the joint, then aspirate and inject. Within the joint, you should feel minimal resistance to flow. Withdraw your needle, clear your sharp safely, apply a Band-Aid, and then discuss post-injection instructions. Warn your patient that their thumb may be numb for several hours after the procedure. The steroid usually takes effect within 72 hours. Patients may experience some pain from the injection before the steroid takes effect. 
To minimize their pain, patients can use ice or use a thumb spica splint for the first few days after the injection. After three to five days, the patient can resume activity as tolerated. Remind the patient to return to the office for any sign of infection, including redness, swelling, or increased pain. These two slides summarize the supplies and technique for a CMC joint injection. You can print the slides as a resource or leave them bedside on screen while you perform the procedure. For your reference, CMC joint diagnosis and procedure codes are listed on this slide. This concludes our CMC joint injection video. This video is brought to you from the San Diego Musculoskeletal Project. Please check out our other musculoskeletal videos on the SDMSK Project channel. Thank you for listening.